Welcome guys, I've got my barn dance shirt on because we're going to a barn dance. In fact, sorry, no, cancel that, I misspoke. I've got my barn dance shirt on because we're gonna do the nine ultimate circle time math games in existence. Also, there's a little bonus. At the very end, the very last game has got a real ghost in it as well. It's seriously spooky guys, it's seriously scary, so stick around for that. This is Early Impact, let's go. I've basically been a teacher of children between the ages of about three to five for absolutely donkey's years, basically. But I think all these games are great for children between the ages of about three to seven. And these are my ultimate games. I've picked them out of at least probably a hundred maths games. These are the pick of the crop. Game number one of the Circle Time Math or Maths games. This is called Snowball, and this is an absolute beast of a game. What you need for this are some small squares of paper, just any kind of random A4 paper. You need at least one piece of paper per child that you've got. And what you do, you write some numbers on the paper. You want pairs of numbers. So for example, I've got two 11s here. Here are two sevens. They're all a bit wrinkly and crinkled because you're about to crinkle them up. What you also need is one odd one out. So for example, here I have a zero. And there's only one of them. Get the kids to stand up. And what you do, you go and give them each one of these numbers. Just randomly give them a number. Then the really exciting bit, they get to roll them into a snowball. They crinkle them up. And this is the real life snowball. And what they do, they're going to throw the balls into the middle of the, the circle. So you'll have a heap of snowballs. Then the next part of the game is everyone is going to pick up someone else's snowball. You're not allowed to pick your own snowball up. If adults did the game, they probably wouldn't even know which snowball was theirs, but kids are quite territorial. They're, they're kind of a bit like, you. that's mine, stay away. But we don't get involved in that. You got to pick up someone else's snowball and then you open it up. For example, I've got 11. Now the name of the game is you need to go and find your matching partner. You go around, someone else is gonna have an 11, for example. I'm gonna go and stand next to that person. We've partnered up and it's all good. One lucky person is gonna be the champion. That person is gonna have no partner. So for example, the zero, they're the winner. If you have an even number of children, you'll have two champions. So you need two pieces of paper that don't have a partner. Basically, then you have two champions. But that is basically the name of the game. Very simple, loads of skills involved. It's great for standing someone next to someone that's not necessarily your best friend. Also, it's just great for number recognition. You can do things like shapes as well. You could have different shapes on the piece of paper. This could be a triangle, for example. You can try and find your mate who's got a triangle, or it could be a square. You could also do things like addition. It could be two add two on this one, and someone else has got number four, and you try and team up. So you can make it much trickier as well. Great for cooperation, great for lots and lots of math skills. Give it a whirl. Game number two is count in different voices. If you're one of those people that has the urge to make ridiculous noises and use silly voices, this is the game for you. And there's definitely some of those people out there. What you need for this is some kind of character dice. What you need is some kind of building block. You know, it's like a building block that you're not gonna use ever again. And on this building block, I've drawn some characters. Like if you see here, there's an alien. Here is the spooky ghost. Not as spooky as the real ghost you see later, but similar. Robot. Uh, and all that kind of stuff. Basically the idea of this, this is a simple counting game. The children sit in a circle, and what you're gonna do, you're gonna roll the dice. Here now is you're gonna use a robot voice to count. So all together you're gonna use your best robot voice and go a bit like, one, two, three, four, five, children. We'll do the ghost, it's good preparation for later on. The best spooky ghost voice and you're like, one, two, three, four. This is great for reluctant children. They're not very interested in counting in a normal voice, but it's just a way of getting them inspired. If you're liking these games so far, guys, then please just dink that like button for me if you wouldn't mind. Just a little, tiny little ding, little dink of your finger on the like, that would be a beautiful thing. It will help the video spread like absolute wildfire, which is fantastic, and these games will be spreading to a wider audience. So a little, just a little dink, thank you so very much. Two dice are required for the next game. This is the action dice game. What you need for this is some kind of simple numeral dice, this is just a building block of some numbers on, very, very simple. And also, an actions dice. What you need for this are things like some drawn actions, like this one is supposed to be hopping. So, the name of the game here, you get two dice, roll them both at the same time. And for example, you're gonna do five star jumps. So, the children stand up in the circle, off they go, five star jumps, one, two, three, you know, all that kind of stuff. Let's do it again. Great. Four hops, doing this at home, you know, join in, up you get, four hops. The one they really enjoy the most, which is super tricky, is roaring. It's going a bit like, roar, like that. It's quite tricky because you can't count with your mouth as you do it. So for example, if it was six roars, 
you have to try and count either in your brain or on your fingers. But yeah, there we go, action dice. Very, very exciting. Next is counting round the circle. There's lots of different ways of doing this. Let me just uh, talk you through some of them. Number one, get the children sat in a circle. Very simple, the adult is just gonna say one. Then the next child on, on your right is gonna say two. Next child says three, four, and you just pass it around the circle like magic. You can also do the version where you split up the circle. You put some kind of line down the middle. And this is more like a tennis match. And so on this side, they're gonna say one. On this side, they're gonna say two, three, four, five, six. And you're just gonna keep going like that, bouncing backwards and forwards like a tennis match and learning how to count. Both these games later on are great for counting in different ways. For example, you could count in tens. First person says 10, next person says 20, 30, and you count around like that. You can do different times tables. You could count in sevens. You could count in you know, nines. You could go backwards. You could start at 100 and count backwards in tens, all that kind of stuff. So it doesn't have to just be counting in ones. There's lots of ways of making it trickier, but the simple structure of the game remains the same. Now it's time for the bit of the video where I stick a pin in the map. I've got a big map of the world, and anyone that comments and puts where they're from on one of these videos, I will stick a pin in our map to show what part of the world you are from. So today we've got Joe in Alaska. Thanks a lot for commenting, Joe. And we're gonna stick your a pin in the virtual map, but next week the real map will have arrived and that'll be stuck on the wall and it'll be a very exciting time. Number five, this game is called Number Pass. This sounds very simple, the concept, but it's probably my ultimate favorite number recognition game to try. What you do, sit in, sit in a circle, and have a pile of numbers, something like this. And what you do, quite simply, you pass the numbers around and the kids are gonna say what number it is. Like, the person is gonna say 16, pass the next person, 16, 16, 14, 14, you know, whatever number is working on, five, all that kind of stuff, pass it around. There are two beautiful things involved in this game. Number one is if the children are good at recognizing numbers anyway, this is good practice, because they get loads and loads of goes of practicing saying the numbers, and it's great just for practicing. But number two is if the children don't know, some of them might not know all the numbers are, you can kind of listen to the person next to you and try and, you know, if they're saying five, it probably is a five, so you say five as well. So it's good for even the ones that can't quite do it, but they can kind of learn off others. There's a bit of both of those balanced together, which is all good. Game okay, number six is the number circle. The idea of this, the children stand up in a circle, go and give them all one number. What they do, they're gonna put the number on the floor next to them. And so what you have is like a circle of numbers on the floor. Then put some kind of music on, some kind of pumping tune. And what the children are gonna do, when the tune is on, they're gonna move around the circle, so they're gonna walk around the circle of numbers. When the music stops, you freeze. You freeze next to your number. And what you do, you're gonna say it in different ways. One way of saying it is in your fast voice. They really found this very entertaining. So for example, if it's number five, in your fast voice you say a bit like, five, 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 Music starts, off you go again. You can also use different types of voices. You can use your slow voice. Six. You can use a high voice or a low voice. You can use things like you know, a ghost voice or a tiger. If it was a tiger, it'd be a bit like six. This is a great game for teaching letters and words as well, but great for you know, early mathematics. Give it a whirl. Game seven is count with a puppet. Tell me with this, I've got Mike the monkey. You'd never actually believe where I found Mike originally. Uh, he was in a skip. Uh, and I saved him, I basically saved his life and brought him, brought him home. He's gonna help us do this game. You might have noticed that some children are more interested in what puppets say than humans. They're much more excited when some kind of puppet comes out. And if that sounds like, like you and some of the kids you're trying to teach, then this is a good game for you. A good fun way that the kids really love is when the puppet goes wrong. This is kind of like a counting listening game. Children sit in a circle and the puppet is gonna count, but something is gonna go wrong. Kids have gotta say what number should go next. One, two, three, six, seven, and they'll go like, Faah! and they find, find the hilarious, so like, tears coming out of their eyes, absolutely hilarious. And that's a very good one for very young ones when they're just starting off with simple rope counting. The one I've tried is puppet aerobics, and this is a really good one for rope counting. The puppet's gonna do some kind of simple move, something like this kind of thing and count at the same time, and the children are just gonna basically join in. Let's do counting backwards, so it's a little bit different. I'm gonna count back from 10 and do a bit of this, like 10, nine, eight, seven. You're just get them to join in. Great one, this just for counting in different numbers. You can do different moves, you know, be as creative as you want, get the puppet to do all sorts of uh, crazy moves, see if the children can jump, you know, stand up and copy the move, all that kind of stuff. If they can invent some move for the puppet to do, fantastic, so yeah. 
give puppet counting, give it a bash. Next is dance counting. This is a really active circle game. Get the children all to stand up in a circle. You need some kind of dice for this. Again, it's just the, a building block with numbers on. And what you do, you're just gonna roll it. And for example, we've got number two to start off. What you do, put some pumping tune on, some hardcore disco classic, or you, you choose whatever it is. Put some music on, and you're gonna pick a simple dance move. Something like doing this. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna count to two as you do it, and keep counting to two. Let me show you. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, a bit like that. Mix up the moves, do lots of you know, all this kind of stuff, or you know, be, be as creative as you want. The kids can come up with their own dance moves, incredible. That is the way to do it. Before we see the real ghost, I should just say that all of these games that we're seeing now are all in my book, 101 Circle Time Games That Actually Work. This covers the entire curriculum, you know, it's maths, literacy, physical, lots of emotional stuff in there. There's loads and loads of exciting games. So if you're feeling stuck for Circle Time Games, that is the book for you. You can check it out at earlyimpactlearning.com forward slash circle. Check it out there, it's an ebook. You know, you can buy it, you can read it straight away. Loads and loads of ideas. Now it's time for the grand finale. In this bag, there is a real life ghost. Let me just get it out for you now. Here it comes, guys. Hopefully you can see this. Seriously spooky. This is the Boo Game. If you try nothing else, I would definitely recommend this one. All you need is a kind of a bottle top or something similar with a ghost on. And also I've got some other bottle tops with numbers on. Here is the number two. And there's lots of different numbers in this bag. What you do for this game, the children sit in a circle. The ghost goes back into the mix with the numbers. What you do, you pass the bag round. And one at a time, they take out a number and say what it is. For example, this one is number six. And then they keep the number, then the next person goes. They say the number, you know, seven or whatever. You want to get the ghost. If you get the ghost, you're the champion. The ghost gets to go, boo! and scare everyone. So it's a game of anticipation, excitement. It's super, super exciting. If you're looking for some more math games than the ones you've seen today, I've also done another video about number recognition. In that video, I've put together my ultimate number recognition games, games that I've tried over a 10 year period and seen the best success with. That video is gonna be popping up onto the screen right here. So check that out. The best number recognition games that you can try. Check it out now.